tools to connect and generally uh, provide ways for continuing education uh, throughout uh, our content in events and our newsletters. So thank you again so much for joining us. This is our second event actually with uh, Blair and the Marengo team. So we really wanna thank them for joining us again. We had uh, a superstar conversation during our last event and I know it's gonna be another uh, event just like this this evening. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Blair and uh, kickstart our presentation. Yeah, so thank you so much to Lucia and the CWBSA for arranging this event. So I'm, I'm Blair, I'm the founder of Marengo, which helps current and future leaders achieve their goals by matching them with great executive coaches, one of whom is, is here with us tonight. So I'm happy to be here with highly sought out Marengo executive coach, May Empson, who's a, a great fit for this group and this topic given you know, her own personal journey. So in the process of becoming an ex McKinsey consultant, May came to appreciate the value of uncovering her purpose and achieving work-life balance. And now May helps clients really design their own life on their own terms. She, uh, she works at the intersection of strategy and spirituality. So, you know, whether it's personal or professional goals, May helps her clients expand their vision for what's possible. So May, it's, it's great to have you here. It's lovely to be here. So thank you so much, Blair. Thank you, Lucia and Nick as well. And thank you all for making the time. I know that it's not easy to find time, especially as the days get busier and busier, but I think this is the perfect time to be here. It is the right time in the right place. And today we are really going to go into this topic of becoming the intuitive leader, how to lead with intuition and succeed on your own terms. So it will be interactive, so feel free to use the chat. We are going to challenge your thinking and encourage you to really use this time as a workshopping time for something you have on your mind. Okay, so specifically, we're going to talk through how to make that shift, that shift from when you're struggling to hear your inner voice, feeling like you're not sure about what your values are, and maybe you're not even living in alignment with your values if you do know what they are, to actually lacking confidence about what you want next. And then we're going to move into this place where you start to discover and create the self-leader who knows intuitively what they want and why. So you are in the right place if you're ready to experience more truth in your life, truth about who you are, and what you stand for, no matter what the circumstance. You're also in the right place if you're excited about slowing down because you know you've been pushing and pushing past your intuitive guidance and you signed up today because you're excited to, to take a pause and a break and actually check in and see how things are going for you. And then you're also in the right place if you're curious about self-leadership, this concept of leading yourself and ways that you can actually create your external world from within. Okay, so type in number one, two, or three in the chat, which is over here for me, so I'll be looking over here, which one of these resonates with you the most and in terms of why you have shown up here today? One, two, or three. Ready to experience more truth. Excited about slowing down, number two. Or curious about self-leadership and creating your world from within. So we have one, two, three, all of them. One, twos, and threes. Okay, so a good variety. All right, yep, so threes, all. Okay, and so I'll encourage you to remember this. Because in our world of go, 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 and I think many of you as Columbia grads know what it's like to be surrounded by a lot of voices and surrounded by society and people and people going in certain directions and you get caught up sometimes in that comparison. 
And it really takes us out of our own journey and our own enjoyment and our own happiness. And so if you're in that place where you're feeling like you're starting to look around and sometimes you're not sure of what it is that you're here to do and why and what your next step is, coming back to these three points here are going to be some of the cornerstones for developing your own intuitive practice as well. But whatever your motivation is for showing up here today, I want you to know that you are fully supported. So I want you to imagine for a moment, intuition loves imagination. Can you imagine what it would be like if you not only figured out what makes you tick and what you stand for and what you want in your life, but you also knew this process for actually continuously creating a life where you get to experience these things daily. This is a rhetorical question, but if you feel like you could, you can put a yes in the chat here. But I want you to kind of go with me on this journey today of exploration, because that is where we're going. And so here's one thing that I want you to really understand. Leading with intuition means that you no longer are following the compass given to you by society, but you're creating your own inner compass that drives the decisions and the actions for creating a fulfilling inner and outer life. And I'm going to now walk you through three decisions for creating and becoming an intuitive leader. Okay, so where we're going to go today is we're going to talk about decision number one, which is all around your identity. Then we will move into decision number two, choice, and then decision number three, resonance. And then we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. Okay, so the first decision is this. You don't need to figure out who you are. You need to decide who you want to be. And so right now, feel free to drop in the chat. What is one area you want to focus on in your life right now? Where if you put some time and effort and you actually improve this one area, it would dramatically improve the quality of your life. A place where you want to live in more alignment, whether it's health or business, relationships, time management, maybe it's emotional health, maybe it's finances, feel free to drop that into the chat. And at the very least, write that down for yourself because we're gonna keep going with this one focus area today. Okay, so Blair says parenting. What else do you guys have? Okay, and so once you have that in your head, I want you to jump into the comments, start sharing with me what is that one idea you have as your number one priority right now? What is it that you want more clarity on? What do you want more focus on? And where do you want to be a little bit better than you were yesterday? Best dad, emotions. Yes, all of this, devoting as much time to my personal well-being as I do to my professional success. Absolutely. That is a really big one. Yes. And Lisa also agrees with that. Yeah. I think that resonates with a lot of us right now. Yep. Being able to put some time into your own piggy bank instead of everyone else's. All right. Emotional health, improving my discipline, Yes, I would say that's also a very big one as well. Less emotion and more strategy. Yeah, yeah. How do we come out of this mind full of drama and move into clarity and clear thinking? Okay. And so thank you guys for dropping that in. I would encourage you if you haven't come up with a focus area to start thinking about that for yourself. What is something, an area of your life that you'd want to put a little bit more time and energy into that would dramatically improve the quality of the rest of your life? And we're gonna use that as the thread for the rest of our discussion today. How to show up better as a leader. Yeah, so gaining followership and all the things 
professional plus husband plus dad plus self, how to fit it all in. Yeah. How do we make moves in all the areas? So let's pick one first, Paul. What's the first domino? And you can use that as your one thing today. Okay. So let's talk about identity. So the fastest way to get to who you want to be is to decide on an identity. Who do you want to be? So let's break down what identity is. Your identity, first and foremost, is like your potential. It is limitless. You can decide at any moment, at any time, who and what you want to be. And that identity drives your thought patterns. When we talk about emotional health, a lot of that sometimes resides in identity. It drives your belief systems of what you think you get to have, what you get to believe, what you get to do and the actions that you take and then the decisions that you make. And then the second thing around identity is that our mind, body, and spirit works with congruence. So it wants us to be fully aligned with who we believe we are. So our subconscious mind is constantly looking for ways for us to fulfill our identity. And once you decide on who it is you want to be, it starts to find all these opportunities for you to show up that way. So think about that focus area of yours right now as an example, you can think of health. So if it was health and if you wanted to think of yourself with an identity of an athlete, would an athlete rest properly, eat properly, exercise regularly? Absolutely, right? They definitely would. So based on that focus area that you have, what identity would serve you to embody in your own life? And feel free to drop that into the chat now. So the thinking's already started, but try to think, what is that identity? If you want to be a better parent, right? Maybe the identity is a teacher right? Or their guide, or maybe you're going to be their first guru. Um, but think of an expansive identity for you. So maybe if you're someone who wants to exercise, you don't consider yourself an athlete, but we're looking at more expansive versions of an identity that would challenge you to stretch into new and different ways of being. So start to think about what that would be. And so the third thing is that you are a spiritual being having a human existence. So before this, someone had asked me this question, if I'm not my career, if I'm not my body, if I'm not all these other things that we've identified with, then who are we? And um, this person had just listened to the podcast in the first few episodes and in the second episode. So I have a podcast, it's called Own Your Best Life. In the second episode, I talk about perfectionism and how it's rooted in our identity, our identity of an end result and having that end result define who we are. And who are we then if we're not our results? Who are we if we're not our body? Who are we if we're not our achievements? And this is that fundamental question and that understanding that can change your life if you let it. So if you can truly see yourself as being a little bit bigger more transcendent than this human experience and this human existence, you'll start to see life almost more as this game. And you'll start to witness your experiences as lessons. And all of these lessons are on your path to your growth. And the question is this, so how many times have you actually start to see that in hindsight, something that seemed like a disaster of an event actually changed your life for the better? right? Say yes in the chat if that has happened to you. And once you are viewing it from that super conscious perspective, you'll start to understand the next decision, which is decision number two. But before we get there, I want to hear from you. Take a moment, right? To think about what identity would serve you and let us know in the chat. And if you want to Take action now, and I encourage you to do so. Pull out your phone and actually set a reminder in the middle of the day, an alarm with that identity. And that serves us in the middle of things getting crazy in the moment when you're about to be overwhelmed 
to remind you of who you want to show up as today. And that interrupts our patterns of behavior. So if you're usually very overwhelmed and feeling like this, you know, is another thing that gets added on your plate. If you get this reminder that pops up and you're like calm and decisive leader, you're going to say, okay, let me go back to all the ways that I can feel calm and decisive in this moment. Maybe you want to feel confident and relaxed, right? As a parent or in a relationship. You can use those words to trigger you, to remind you in the middle of the day what it is that you want to feel. And so these are really practical things that you can do, but they're really tangible. And the reason that they work is because they actually interrupt us in the middle of our normal everyday life. All right. So I haven't seen any identities pop up, but I trust that you guys are figuring them out and thinking about what identity would serve you on your own. Okay. So let's talk about decision number two. So decision number two is to own that you are more powerful than you realize. What does that mean? It means that the greatest power you actually have in your life is choice. And leading with intuition is all about exercising your power of choice. Many times our most difficult situations and the greatest suffering that we have comes when we feel helpless. All of these things are happening and there's nothing I can do about it. I don't like what's in front of me and I don't want it to be happening and I can't do anything to change it. But there's always some power of choice in the situation. And if you really look at it, you'll usually find it. But you have to stop and decide that you want to create your power of choice. Many times we might be in a group environment and we're not the de facto leader in this situation. How would you lead then in that when you feel like you have no power? You have to believe that you can create power. And by believing that you have choice, right? Choice in what you say, choice in how you show up, choice in all the ways that you're contributing to these conversations, you then create leadership. And so personal power and personal mastery comes from deciding in certain moments that there is a choice that you can make instead of saying, well, there's nothing I can do. Or, you know, this is just how it is, right? Choice doesn't mean you're forcing something onto other people. The choice can be in how you're feeling about it. The choice can be in letting something go. The choice can be in making peace. The choice can be in, you know, creating like a 1% shift in the conversation as well. So there's something happening. And every day we're getting intuitive hits about what we need to do in life. And you might not believe that these are intuitive hits but they are. So that nudge to go, if you're a parent, check on your kids and you find them doing something weird, right? In that other room or that weird vibe that you get from that person or that feeling that this isn't your path, right? That's a big one. A lot of people get that one and they're just like, no, I'm just, I'm just going to try to ignore it. Those intuitive hits are there. You might even get an idea for a strategy and the way that you want to move forward but we might not want to listen to our intuition and we might not want to listen to that inner wisdom, but it's there. And I remember when I first began working on my intuitive skills, it was to figure out daily life issues. How do I solve this problem at work? How do I want to respond to that email? What should I do about childcare? What's the right strategy moving forward? And that ultimate question, right? What's next? So then I realized that when I became still enough, right, the second point, when I became still enough to listen to my intuition, I actually had all the answers and they were there all along. And I developed a meditation practice and a process for being able to come up with the answers that I was looking for. And I still use this to this day and I still recommend it to my clients and they use it as well. And you're no longer looking externally for every single decision that you make to validate what you're doing, right? If you're the person, and I know some of you are, that takes like 
five days to book a flight or 10 hours and you're still staring at the itinerary, figuring out if you should do this or that, or you're checking all the reviews and reading thousands of reviews before you can finally decide, or you're like, I have to go to the best restaurant to eat. And only if I go to the best restaurant, is it worth my time? This might be for you. So say yes in the chat, right? If you feel like it would be helpful for you to develop your own process for receiving reliable, intuitive guidance. Yes, yeah, I think people want to spend a lot less time making decisions. I would highly encourage it. And so this last point about where am I giving my power away is completely there. Many times we hear something in our intuition. We're like, I don't know, is this, is this my intuition or is this just a, a, a passing thought? It does take some skill. It takes practice, just like anything else, to start to understand what it sounds like. But one note is that your intuition, your highest intuition, will refuse to blame. And instead of saying, well, you know, that's just how it is, it'll ask you, well, where am I giving my power away and how can I take it back? And so that's always a good question to check your intuition, just like you know, when we talk about diversity and inclusion and how to manage biases, you know that you probably have a bias. And most of our biases, because we are human and we have evolved with our reptilian brains, is to be very fear-based. So most times, if we want to make a decision and we don't make it right away, when the decision goes longer and longer and longer, we end up saying no, right? Because more negative thoughts come in, more fears come in. Oh, I can't invest in that. No, no, no. Well, that makes no sense anymore. Right. So just be on to yourself in terms of your own biases, in terms of the way that you're giving your own power away when you make decisions and they tend to last a little bit too long. Okay. So I want you to just take another moment in this exercise to write down any ideas regarding your focus area right now. So you might be like, I don't know what my ideas are, but they're there. So I challenge you to just write down whatever comes to mind. There's something there. Take a moment to get still. I'm going to lead you through a quick exercise so you can breathe with me. And if you feel comfortable, feel free to close your eyes. Take a moment to just ground yourself in your seat and to relax, taking a deep breath in through the nose and then exhaling out through the mouth, gently feeling your sit bones connect to your seat, feeling the floor beneath you, maybe it's connected to your feet. And feeling your shoulders relax down, feeling the tension from this day, this week, this month, maybe the past two years start to release. And then as you start to relax and let a few things go, I want you to bring up into your mind's eye that one question that you have right now. What is the question that you have about that focus area in your life? How do I be a better leader? How do I be a mom, dad, parent that I want to be? How do I not yell at my kids? How do I show up as a more confident version of me? What should I do next about this big decision? I want you to just listen in to what comes up for you. What are some of the thoughts that pop into your mind right now? Maybe there's some images. Maybe you hear something. Maybe you feel something in your body. Do you feel it in your chest? Do you feel it in your shoulders? Do you feel it in your jaw? maybe your temples or even your belly? Is there tension somewhere that you feel? I 
And just taking a moment to now breathe in through the nose again, holding it at the top, and then exhaling out deeply and completely. Seeing again, whatever thought that comes to your mind and capturing it in your attention. And as you come back, gently wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes, and gently opening up your eyes, just start to write down some ideas that came to mind regarding your focus area. Hopefully you feel a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. How to balance time management and end procrastination and overthinking. Yes. It's a beautiful one to solve through intuition, right? A lot of times our time management concerns come from our mental rumination, right? And our overthinking. We don't make a decision of what we need to do next or what's most important. So then it's hard for us to figure out what's next and then we feel overwhelmed. So absolutely, these practices will help in that. Okay. So if you have lots of different ideas, feel free to circle some or highlight those that sound like your highest self, the ones that sound calm, the ones that sound resourceful. Okay. And one of the reasons that I like to do these grounding and breathing and, you know, small meditative activities is because the way our brain works is that when we are calm and we are not in fight or flight and we are not in fear, then we're not in our reptilian brain, which tends to do automatic behaviors, automatic behaviors are great when you're trying to run away from a cheetah and save your life. But picking the next thing you need to do or what you want to eat for dinner or how to respond to an email or a person is generally not a life or death situation. And yet we treat it as such. And then our stress, or our cortisol starts to raise and we start to see very few options, right? So this is just brain and science and our neuroscience working for us, but it doesn't work for us in these situations. So calming ourselves into a place where we are more relaxed actually opens up our learning centers. It enables us to use our prefrontal cortex so that we're able then to be more strategic. And our prefrontal cortex is a little bit slower. So it needs some time. It needs some stillness. So in the moment, this is a person who so someone had asked the question beforehand, in the moment, how do I make a decision and lean into my intuition? So you can come back to a practice like this. Take a second to breathe, right? Deeply in and out and it lowers the cortisol. Do it as much as you need to. Connect to your body, right? Ground, you can even rub your hands, like reconnect to something physical so that you come back to yourself and you start to come back into a sense of calm and make a decision from there. When you make a decision from a place of high emotion, your intelligence is low, okay? So let us keep on moving. All right, thanks, Blair. She's capturing some of the notes here. All right, so then what is the next step? It is to exercise our power of choice, taking action on this intuition is that second step. So you can't just hear this intuitive voice and nudge and not take action on it. If you truly want to become an intuitive leader and lead with intuition. And this is when usually fear comes in. This is when the past comes in. This is when our patterns or our identities that you're carrying come into play. So if you can do that work of like clipping the wings of your past, moving into these new identities and these new futures that serve how you want to feel and what you want to have in your life, you're going to be able to take massive action on all of this intuitive guidance coming your way. And I remember once I started taking action on this intuition, it was like a life experiment, 
it was like, what would life be like if I actually did what my intuitive highest self knew to do? It seems very simple, but simple is not always easy. Leaving jobs are simple, but they're not easy. Going back to school is simple, but not easy. Investing in yourself is as simple as a click of a button, but it's not easy. Making decisions, which will change the course of your life, are all simple things, but they're not easy. But once you decide, and this is point number three, that you've seen what it feels like to live out of alignment with your intuition and how that's worked for you and how it's not what you want anymore, then this is now your next best step. And so taking your life into your own hands and living out your values, living out your guidance, living out your purpose. And so people don't often do this. They don't often evaluate, how did this decision work out for me? So you hear an intuitive nudge, you follow it, you stay committed to it because it wasn't about it being you know, easy. It was about this being worthwhile. And then you ask yourself, how did this decision work out? You know, it takes courage. It takes faith. It takes a lot of resilience to lean into your intuition because it usually means doing something you haven't done before, especially when it feels scary. And then when you start to evaluate and you start to see how it's worked out, you get better and better at this process. And you start to realize, oh, then I followed that intuitive nudge. That was a fear-based thing. And that was what I always do. Right? And that didn't work out so well. So maybe that wasn't my intuitive self-talking. Maybe that wasn't the intuition I want to follow. Maybe I want to check and use a little bit more intelligence next time, ask another question, maybe talk to someone else and be like, does this sound right to you? And then take an action from there. Right. So it's not just, you know, blindly following all the nudges, but it's actually checking and seeing how it works. Yes. So Darren is saying our society and culture doesn't support or value this, but it is critical to being your authentic self. Thanks. Yeah. So you're going to find that it feels like you're deviating a lot of times from the norm. And it only seems like you're deviating from the norm because that's what you're surrounded by in the moment. And I love now not being normal. Not that I'm striving to be weird and strange, but I actually think it's good if you're a little bit different from the rest of the crowd, you know, not because you're trying to be, but just because we are all different. We aren't supposed to be carbon copies of other people, yet it is what we try to do. And we think, I want that life, or how come I haven't had that, when you really don't actually want that life. And there are real valid reasons you've made the choices that you've made in your life. All right. Thanks for the feedback. This is really helpful. Perfect. I'm glad. All right. So we talked about all this, but there are barriers for exercising your power of choice. Your barriers are going to be this. You're not going to take action. I'm telling you now, you're going to be like, ooh, May said a bunch of stuff and I feel really excited. But then the thing comes and you're like, oh, I don't know. I can't do this. No, that's too risky. Or you're going to value ease. I want the easy way, May. Like, I don't want to feel all these uncomfortable feelings. I don't want to feel like, what if I'm out on a limb here, right? And so you don't need, right, this thing that bets. You're just like, well, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It, like, my life is easy right now, and that's good. And the other barrier is that you're not going to commit to living to your intuition. You're not going to evaluate how your life is going. You're going to put some blinders on and be like, it's fine right? Like all is well. So let's challenge ourselves and be onto ourselves here and actually bring some self-awareness to this conversation. Which barrier do you think is preventing you right now from exercising your pow own power of choice? So if you think about maybe that one area where you are struggling a little bit, or that you just know that if you, you know, put a little time and attention into it would help improve the rest of your life. What are you doing right now? Are you not taking action on what you know to do? That your intuitive, what your intuition is telling you? Are you just wanting it to be easy and you're resisting and you're like, no, but it should just be easy instead of being like, 
well, there are supposed to be problems in your work because that is the value that you bring is to solve problems or you're not evaluating. You're moving too fast in your life and you are just flying and not thinking about what actually worked, what didn't work and what you would do differently next time. All right, so I see a few ones not taking action. That's a very common one. I see some twos coming in. Okay, a, a little bit more ones. All okay. right, so you can see now that a lot of our mental models, because these are all mental models, if you're not aware, are keeping us from leading with intuition. You probably believe some of these things. Life should be easy, right? Why do I have to make a decision and take action, right? Or I don't want to reflect. <laughs> you know, I don't like, why do I need to look at my life or look at my decisions? I just want to enjoy, right? And so I'm not saying you don't enjoy, but what if you could do all of these things and then enjoy your life even more? What if you could enjoy this entire process because you start to see it as almost this game, but you know how to win. And that's the difference. When you start to hone these skills, you're starting to learn how to win at the game of life because you're learning a lot more about what thrills you, what scares you, and what actually gets you up, right? And gets you excited and passionate about life again. Yes. So I see a fourth one here, hesitancy, right? To walk away from things that previously provided joy, even if they no longer do. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's also like number one, not taking action. You're hearing the sense that this is no longer my path or this is no longer the thing, but it's hard to step away. Yeah. We've all had those moments and I would challenge you. Um, you're probably on this call for a reason and there's something in your life you're thinking about that you feel inconsistent with and incongruent with. And that's your spirit talking, right? When I talk about spirit, it's not that religious sense of spirit, but the sense of your spiritual need, which is to grow and to contribute in some way. And so you all have these needs and we all do to grow and to contribute. And when those are not getting met, we usually start to feel this rub and this tension in our life. And that's what we're feeling now. All right. Okay. So let's move to decision number three. This one is about deciding that resonance drives your life. What do we mean by resonance? Resonance is what happens when you realize that the intangible creates the tangible. You think of resonance almost like this wave, right? Something that resonates comes in and it moves little and then it ripples out. So if you truly want to lead in this world, you need to create the tangible, the things that you see from the intangible. You need to create your outer world from your inner world. You need to create thought into form. And this is how resonance from the inside out occurs. And most of us are living from the outside in. I'm going to get this job. I'm going to have this complete family. No one will ever argue in my presence again. Everyone will listen to what I say. And I will feel really at peace and happy as a result. When, in fact, it's probably not going to happen. Not only that, we'll likely not feel that way for very long, even if we did. So it becomes a lot more about what do I want to feel regardless of what is happening in my external world? And that's a big challenge. But I'm going to bring it home for you with this idea of spiritual energy. We have mental energy, we have physical energy, we have emotional energy, and we have spiritual energy. These are the four components of managing your energy. But spiritual energy is the most potent. And since many of you have careers on your mind or they're a big part of your lives, I'm going to bring it back to your work. So when I say spiritual, I'm going to break it down for you in terms of spirituality in the workplace. So I did my research while I was getting my coaching certification at Columbia on spirituality in the workplace. What does spirituality in the workplace mean? It means an inclusive, non-denominational, and very personal understanding of these three things. 
The first one is meaningful and purposeful work. So people want to have meaning in their lives, especially in their work. And they want to do work that does good in the world and has a purpose. The second one is utilizing one's gifts. So people want to feel like I'm bringing my whole self to work, which means they want to bring their gifts to work and they want to utilize them. And the third one is developing community. People want to have a sense of community in the work they do. They long for connection. So let me know in the chat, which one of these resonates with you the most? Is it meaningful and purposeful work? Is it utilizing one's gifts? Is it developing community? And I want you to think through which of these areas would actually be most useful for your focus area. And feel free to put that into the comments. So I wanna answer this question that came up beforehand. So thanks for submitting questions earlier on. Someone asked a question about how self-leadership applies to entrepreneurship. And as you can imagine, when you are building your own business, you no longer have the security of other people's voices to hide behind. There is no one but you that is responsible for the state of your business. And this can be a wonderful thing, or this can be a scary thing. And I choose to believe that it's wonderful. Why is that? If you can decide that resonance matters, then you realize that your thoughts are what create your results. And if you think of yourself as a powerful leader and have a self-concept, self-identity, self-image as one, then you would feel empowered and responsible and committed, not just in your business, but across all areas of your life. And so the reason why the emotions of courage and resilience and faith are so necessary to build a business is because those are the emotions of a person who is a self leader. When you can lead yourself, you'll be much more effective at leading other people. And if you don't understand the meaning or purpose of what you're doing, it is hard to lead yourself, right? Constant storm and chaos of the state of affairs affecting your business, of things happening, of changes. What does this mean? How do you fix this? Right? How do you lead yourself if you don't know why you're doing this in the first place? If you don't see how your gifts are being brought to bear in your work and in your journey, and they're not the forefront, it's going to be really hard to lead yourself. And if you don't feel like you can create relationships, relationships with yourself through your vision and the focus and the why of what you're doing, what you're doing today, it's going to be hard to connect with other people and bring them along in your journey. So that spiritual energy of yours and your self-leadership are one and the same. So it's in your ability to do what you say you will do, which is a very hard thing to do for many people, but it's in your ability to do what you say you will do and understand that your relationship with yourself and how you see yourself in that self-concept of yours that is what creates your actions and that's what creates your results. So if you have one thought, I would recommend it would be this, that developing this inner compass will make all aspects of your life easier, including your business. Okay. So I see a lot of things in the chat as well. So I see that you are resonating with using your gifts, meaning and purpose, meaning and purpose, using your gifts and meaning and purpose and community as well. So yeah, and some of the struggles sometimes is what is my meaning, right? What is my purpose? And if we are not committed to understanding our gifts, to understanding the meaning and purpose of what it is we're here to do and why, it's going to be really hard to live it as well. And so again, Society is not going to ask you to know this, but this is the secret that the visionaries know. They have a vision, right? Visionaries have an idea of why they're doing something, and they have an idea of what they're here on this planet for, and they go after it with that relentless kind of pursuit. The same way, if you're a parent, if you really believed in vegetables, <laughs> and if you're like, this is the thing, guys, 
you know, the one thing I'm going to die on my sword is that my kids will eat vegetables. And why? Well, because, you know, there's one thing you could eat, it would be vegetables, like everything else doesn't really matter. Then you will in those hard moments of, I don't want to eat it or, oh, like, what is that? Or that faces and the challenge. It's way easier to not give the vegetables. It's way easier to succumb. But if you have that vision, the purpose, the like, this is what I'm here for, to be their guide and making sure they're growing healthy in this specific way, you're going to fight the fight. So I know it's a silly example, but it's true. And so I want to ask you, how committed are you to actually defining your own purpose and living your purpose? Okay, on a scale of one to five, you can put that in the chat with your five being fully committed and one being uncommitted, fully uncommitted. How committed are you today to your purpose and to developing that spiritual energy? All right, so we got some fives and threes and fours. Okay, All right. And so I started realizing that my spiritual practices of meditation, of energy work, they were more than just creating a sense of calm or a sense of relief in my life. But they're also allowing me to access my intuition in these new and different ways. And for years, I remember writing off all this intuitive guidance as just patterns or things that I was sure everyone else also knew or everyone else could see. But then I had a very intentional precognitive experience that was so unbelievably accurate that I began to study intuition and I began to develop it at a deeper level. And as a person who grew up, and I'm sure many of you resonate with this, as a person who grew up in a very culturally conditioned environment where practicality and academia were like the pinnacles of achievement, it took me some time to like shed some of those beliefs and to actually lean into the intuitive skills building and to really lean into that. So how we bridge that gap between achievement and spirituality. And this is now my mission and this is also my curiosity. And so it led me to developing my energetics and my sense of energy management in the same way that I remember studying for case interviews in business school. And I began reading energy and the energetic imprint of a person to help me better understand how do I negotiate? How do I show up to this? How do I coach someone, right? And it would go to a deeper level because it would bring to the surface and articulate an understanding of a person or even a situation in a way that resonates even deeper than what you could have if you just came, which most of us do, from one thing to the next and we're just here, right? We're just at that surface level versus that intuitive leader and that deep leader that brings people along on their mission accesses something else in the situation. They ask that question maybe that other people haven't, or they get to the root of the matter in a much more concise way. And that's what I'm challenging you all to think about as a way for you to show up today. So no matter what work you do, your intuition is going to allow you to create your own unique thumbprint of you in everything that you touch. So in summary, so we can get to additional Q and A's, if you wanna hear that inner voice again and know what you stand for and why, there are three decisions that you must make. So the first one is your identity, deciding who you want to be in this area of your life, remembering that it is limitless, like your potential. So you can choose, you can step into a new identity. And this is the fun part. And so the second is choice. We might not like it. <laughs> we have a choice, but we do. It's sometimes easier to blame, but we give our power away when we blame. And so deciding you can create power of choice in any moment will actually increase your decision velocity. You can decide to do this right now. You can make the decision that you have been prolonging in an hour. And so challenge yourself to give yourself that choice. And then the third is resonance, deciding that that intangible is really going to create the tangible and that you must master your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual energy. And of course, your physical as well to master that outer world around you. 
All right. So with that being said, we have a few minutes for questions. So let us know if there is anything that I didn't get to today that you have a question on yourself. And in the meantime, while people are writing in any questions, I remember there was a question that came in. Um, how do you manage other people's voices? And let me just pull it up so I can read it verbatim. Okay. How does one strike the balance between listening to their inner instinct and the outer voices surrounding leadership decisions, especially those regarding teams or high level decisions? All right. So that's a really great one. And one of the reasons for that is because that happens a lot. We have a hard time discerning and we're trying to strike a balance. We're not trying to be that person who just clings to our own beliefs, but we're also trying to be that person that is, you know, participating in this conversation with other people. What I would say is this. We usually think sometimes that intuition means we get the things we want. I've heard my intuitive nudge, it says this, and it says this is the right way. So I'm gonna tell everyone this is the right way and it must end up this way. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you might know what the right thing is to do, but you have something else inside you, your values that are gonna drive how you wanna show up in this conversation. What is your priority in this moment? Is it to be right? Usually if you're trying to build a relationship, no. Right? So we sometimes let things play out. We let life happen. We still might know what would be the right thing to do in the situation, but I'll ask you that your intuition is probably also telling you, let things be, or be you know, that person that balances the different viewpoints in this conversation while holding your own. Right? So intuitive nudges also go back to this idea of knowing what you're prioritizing right now, knowing what your values are, again, going a little bit deeper than that surface level of just, can I get the outcome that I want to say, what's for the highest good for everyone? And in the moment, it might be to let things fail, to see how things play out and to let that be the lesson there. Okay. And then the other, okay, let's see. Purpose can be an overused word. Sometimes it's empowering for those of us that don't know our purpose. How do you define it? Yes. All right. So sometimes people get really tripped up on purpose. They think like, if I don't know my purpose, like, what am I, why am I even here? Like, I'm just lost in this world. And so what I will say is this, usually it will feel like the sense of curiosity. What am I interested in learning in this world? What am I focused on right now? And a lot of times it, what matters more is the quality of the person that you're being more than like the thing that you do a lot. And we confuse purpose with job. So your purpose isn't your job. It might be the reason you do your job, Okay, right? Maybe your purpose in this moment is to provide for your family, right? Maybe this purpose in this moment is to just show up with like a full heart to whatever situation that's put in front of you and just, you know, enjoy it. And so you get to define your purpose as well. And your purpose can be the way that you want to show up in a situation. So it could look like I want to, you know, share my gifts with the world when I figure out what they are. I want to enjoy life and the moments like every minute of the way. And you can decide that's your purpose. It's not like something you're digging for, right? And trying to find. A lot of times we think that and we're just like, well, I'm going to go out and look. And I'm going to look. But it's like that quote, right? Like life is what's happening when you're making other plans. Living is your purpose. Living joyfully is a really good purpose to have. And so if you could just pick one, I would say pick the one that feels like it would expand and increase your sense of joy or fulfillment or enjoyment of life in every moment. I hope that helps. I love that. Kind of a big question. Anyway, thanks for you know sticking around for a couple <laughs> of minutes, even beyond this time. Um, I know we have another question that was submitted ahead of time that we'll we'll get to, and feel free to input more. 
But um, in the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about May's practice and, and working with her, if you want to just leave your email address in the chat, then I'll send you a note uh, tomorrow and follow up with some information. So feel free to do that while May's getting to the, the last question that was submitted ahead of time. Okay. All right. So the last question was, what simple exercises or activities can we do daily in order to better connect with our inner voice and our intuition? So one of them is one that I shared with you. It's a meditation, right? So meditating is that practice, whether you, you know, there's many different ways to practice meditation, but if you're new to it, I would say that what it really is, is this idea of getting still. And when you get still, you actually start to see what's going on in your mind. It's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym, you expect certain results. You expect more toned muscles, like greater flexibility, more endurance. Meditation is your mental gym. It's your mental hygiene. You start to Increase your ability to make decisions, increase your ability to be focused, decrease the amount of stress that you feel in your life. It actually decreases chronic pain as well. And so there's a lot of studies that show that the way that we spend our time is going to affect our bodies and the way that we kind of feel about certain things is going to be the way that you make decisions. So meditation, I would say, is a really good one for people to practice as well as breathing exercises. You know, there's box breathing, there's just taking a deep breath into 10 and releasing to 10 and doing that 10 times. Those things will radically change. You know, if you're going to go into a big presentation in that next hour or so, these are some of the things that you can do to kind of bring yourself back to why are you here? What are you showing up for? And what do you really wanna do? I have a meditation that is intuitive problem solving um, on my website, mayamson.com. So you, it's a free download. So if people want to get that meditation, they can do that there. Okay. Let's see if there are any other questions. I knew you'd say meditation. I was looking for something again. You're like simple, but not easy. <laughs> you're like, can it be? doing things on my checklist. <laughs> right. Oh, that's the thing. If you come to your checklist without an idea of what it is you're trying to do and why, right. Then we just go back into that automatic pattern and behavior. And usually we're trying to do a little bit different than we did the day before, which means we need a moment to come back to it. All right. Okay. I think that's it. I don't see any other questions there. I, I just have a real quick one for you, May. You know, sure. your personal journey, uh, and I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, I, th I think a lot of your personal work came as a result of leaving McKinsey and, and that huge choice for you and reevaluating life. Do, do you feel like your journey from, you know, where you were to where you are now was fairly gradual or was it like a, a huge line of demarcation that you crossed it and sort of eschewed society and, and cultural norms and expectations, you know, how, how was it? Yeah, well, I will say um, everything happens gradually and then suddenly. So nothing ever just happens like this. It's usually like the third time's a charm, right? Or you've been hearing that voice. Like I knew for a long time that just because I was good at something didn't mean that I should do it but I didn't take action on it until I had like wake up calls. And it, for me, it was like, there were three deaths that happened in my life. And the last one, it was someone who was on my team, her, her husband. And it was very dramatic and I was basically there and it just really brought home that life was short and time was of the essence and I knew, and I think many of you know this too, that I wasn't utilizing my gifts like I was in an essence hiding, it felt like, you know, like I'm just, I'm just kind of coasting here, right? I'm not putting it all out there. Um, so I've always had multiple interests. Like I created five-year plans and I executed them. And I realized though that at one point I was just like, 
but why do I want this? And what's the next five-year plan? And it kind of dropped off at a certain point, right? You just kind of get into this rhythm and then you're like, I got busy and now I achieved all these accidental goals. So I don't think it was this one thing per se, but it was many times throughout, right? People may be saying to you like, when are you going to give this up? And you're like, no, I can rationalize anything. And achievers can rationalize everything. This is why I'm doing this today. This is why it's good. You know, like I'm helping people, you know, and I'm not saying I wasn't when I was consulting, but I was like, I'm helping so many people in their organizations through, you know, all of these things and their ways of working and all of that. But there's a difference between um, knowing what you could do and starting to think like, I want to live a life that I don't even know what that could look like in maybe five years from now and not have this huge like plan that looks exactly on paper the way that you might have expected it to look maybe like five years ago, but to actually blow your own mind of what you could achieve and what could happen. I will say that since I've started doing a lot of this kind of work, it's literally like I've created like a new person, right? In the process. And that's what I think is available to everyone is the ability to kind of create who it is that they actually want to be and have fun doing so. Yeah, well, your clients certainly appreciate it and rave about the experience they have with you. So uh, I think it's emanating through, we all, we all feel your power. Thank you all so much for joining. Lucia, thanks for having us, May. We, we appreciate your time and your insights. This, this was really great. Absolutely. It was so fun being here with you all. I hope everyone got a little bit out of today um, what they came here for and that you have a great start to the rest of your year. Thanks so much for having us on. Thank you. Thank you, May. Thank you, Blair. Thank you to everyone on the phone and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Have a wonderful evening.